Right, and we are live. Okay, so this is the second core apps uh, hangout that we're having this week. Uh, we couldn't get the shots or the, the weather app developers into this hangout, unfortunately, but hopefully next week we'll definitely have it. Uh, we're starting to get into a regular routine of what time and day these meetings are going to be uh, happening on. So for starters, we're going to have it on every Thursday and then uh, preferably around 12 UTC. I'll have to still check with Michael Spencer who's uh, in the US time zone and check if the timings are uh, alright with him. And if it is not, then we might push it to uh, a few hours later uh, in the evening. So uh, I hope you guys have read the summary of the previous Hangout that we had. Uh, we had some interesting discussions and that was summarized nicely by Andrew Hazen and he sent it to the Corapps mailing list. So uh, we were assigned some work items from the previous week and I'll start off with uh, going through some of mine and then I'll let you know what happened with those work items. So the first work item that I was given was to to follow up with uh, both, uh, Zoltan regarding the SDK backporting to Trusty. Uh, and I had a discussion with him on IRC and he told me that once Qt 5.3 is uh, has made it to the archive, it won't be backported to Trusty, but then you'll be able to have a new PPA uh, for Qt 5.3 in itself. And if you add and if you uh, also add the SDK PPA, then combined you will have pretty much what Utopic has at the moment. So that was uh, so that was what so basically it means that 14.04 SDK uh, core apps developers will have to use two PPAs in order to have the latest updates uh, for them. Uh, and the only thing that I'm a little concerned about is how well tested that that PPA would be because uh, the Q5.3 PPA was mainly used for testing purposes, and we are being asked to use that on a regular basis. So we we'll still have to test and see how well it goes with our development. Uh, but yeah, so that was uh, what what I followed up with uh, Zoltan. And I wasn't able to follow up with the SDK developers regarding the dynamic uh, tab uh, with regards to the new transition to the new headers uh, because I wasn't really aware of what the issue was in the weather or the, uh, what, what was the other app that had that? Nodes. Yeah, the shots. Yeah, so uh, the thing is, that's why I wanted one of the uh, developers of the uh, of the weather or the shots app in it. But uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get any replies from the other developers on this uh, on regarding this meeting. So, so I think the ongoing I think the ongoing issue has always been um, that some of the apps have a fixed number of tabs. Like, for example, the clock has you know clock alarms, um, stopwatch timer, whereas uh, the weather app, you can dynamically add tabs. So, for example, yeah. if you add a new location, then you get a new tab across the top. And I think the concern is whether that was supported on. And the same happens with shorts. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. I would preferably, I think, would like to delegate this to one of the shorts app developers so that they can sort of go back and forth to the discussion and see what exactly is wrong. Because, I mean, I could bring up the issue with the SK developers, but then... Uh, they would be like, okay, what is the issue? Like, what was the issue that you guys had? And I wouldn't be able to reply to that. So, so that's probably why I want uh, the shots I've up, uh, Joey or uh, uh, Joey to talk to the SDK developers like Tim. Yeah. Or yeah, Roman is the other developer. But Poppy, let's have a quick chat with them to um, to ask them if they could talk to to the SDK guys. Yep. Uh, and also, uh, Andrew, could you also take the meetings for this week, or uh, would you like me to do it? I can do this week again, yeah. <laughs> cool. Or we can help as well. I mean, just um, give us the link and anyone, everyone can chip in. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, if you uh, if you start writing the notes on Ubuntu Pad, then any one of us can edit it uh, parallelly. Cool. Oh, yeah, so... The other uh, interesting development has been the clock app designs. I talked to the designers uh, yesterday and the day before, and uh, so the designs are public right now. I believe Mikhail will hopefully be uh, blogging about it tomorrow. Uh, and but he said until then I'm free to share it with everybody. So I've been given the visual specs uh, regarding how uh, how much grid units each of the elements have to be. I've been given the visual assets as well, such as the icons and so forth. 
So it's a matter of now just using them and implementing uh, everything. So uh, me and uh, Alan have been discussing this uh, regarding what's going to happen because I think as you guys might have seen, the new clock app design does not have a timer and stopwatch. Uh, so, so we were thinking about starting off with a new branch, uh, which would be dedicated to Utopic 3.0 essentially, and that would be a pretty much a reboot of the clock app. So it'll, everything will be starting from fresh. So we'll be starting off uh, with a new code base and so forth. And the reasons for starting off with the new code base was because we will be removing a lot of code from the old clock app, right? Like, for instance, the timer and stopwatch. And also, I was planning to rewrite the uh, the world clocks back into uh, C++ plugin. And considering the amount of changes that we have to do, I think the, better, the best idea would be to start afresh and then have the old clock app and the new clock app parallelly being developed. Uh, so the old clock app will be in the store for for the near future, and then once the new clock app is deemed stable and I think to a point where we can show it off, then we basically switch the old clock app with a new one. That's the plan. Uh, okay. I have a quick question okay. before you continue. Um, uh, I've got no objections at all uh, about, about this. I'm just asking out of curiosity. Why, why do you want to design the um, the world clock backend as a C++ plugin? Okay, the way it's currently implemented is sort of like a bit flaky one. Basically what's happening is the current world clock takes the time zone input from the online service and then it adds or subtracts the time from the current system time. And uh, since we are doing this manually, it's not proven to be too reliable. Like sometimes we see that the clock times are off by one or two minutes because of the way uh, the timers update in the clock app. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is with Qt 5.2, they have added a new Qt time zone class. So there, you, all you got to do is give it the time zone ID, and then it'll automatically give you the proper time. And okay. it'll take into account the daylight savings and all those uh, messy rules that you have to figure out by yourself. Okay. And there's no QML um, API for it, I guess, then? No. I mean, since it was just introducing Qt 5.2, there, there isn't any QML plugin as far as I know. Okay. Um, do you think that might uh, open the doors as well to have uh, another plugin or per perhaps part of this plugin to access the um, the time directly from um, from the same file as the as the settings app um, does? I could do. I mean, I did have a look through the system time zone uh, class. In fact, they also wrote a C++ plugin for their uh, system settings app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, they take the time directly from the network, which I think they do by using a debus call, and I don't think the clock app can do that while running confined. So what the clock app has to do okay. is it has to read the time zone through Qt, and that's pretty much what it's doing currently as well, and it's proven to be sort of reliable as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm wondering. I mean, does debus need for the bus call, do we need to run unconfined for that, or is there a yeah, policy? Yeah, we need to run unconfined, yeah. N no uh, native QML, uh, no native confined apps can use that. OK. Well, another option might be to discuss. Uh, I think we've, we've talked about it in the past, but we are going to explore it further. might be to, to run unconfined. But yeah, I agree that the best option is not to run unconfined. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked to Jamie uh, about this, and he was against the idea of having the clock app run unconfined. Okay. I mean, he would rather have an exception to uh, the policies uh, which the clock app can use, but mm -hmm. running unconfined is the worst case scenario. OK, yeah. yeah and th that's actually what we've done with Calendar. I think we've just introduced uh, an exception uh, for some permissions that TD has needed to, to access to. Yeah, I believe even the clock app uses uh, such an exception for uh, accessing the alarms. From right okay. Now. Okay. All right. Um, I forgot. I had another question. Um, no, just a remark, perhaps. Um, I think I think perhaps it's not that important right now. Um, but when we do the switch, uh, we should also think whether we want to keep the the legacy clock um, in the store or not. I think it might be useful to to leave it in there. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, 
I'm sure people might want to use a clock which also has a time run stopwatch. So yeah. uh, uh, Alan and I discuss and we agreed that we could probably put the clock app in the store and then people can just install it if they want to. And yeah. also the legacy clock app has, well, it's it's nice in, in itself, so people might choose that sometimes. Cool. All right, so yeah, sorry for interrupting. Go on. Yeah, so I've got the visual assets uh, and I just need to put it on a public link. I mean, it's uh, shared to my Google Drive. And do you guys have any ideas on where I can put that? The Corrupts wiki. That's the other, the other thing that I wanted to ask. That's the thing that I for, had forgotten. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can put it on the on the clock um, page. Um, we've got a link uh, a link to all of the. So we've got a link to all to design blog posts and things like that. It might be worth putting it in there. Touch. Let me just give you a link. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend putting it in uh, in there, uh, or even we've got, we've even got a design uh, page. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're referring to? Oh, yeah. Basically, the clock apps uh, wiki page. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, and also like I wanted to since we're starting off with the reboot, I'll make sure that the README files and everything are properly updated right from the start, so that I make it easier upon other. Our uh, devs want to contribute to the implementation as well. Cool. So, um, what time? Uh, what timeline are you are you thinking of for this uh, initial migration? Um, is there any big fixes? I mean, I, I'm guessing that there's no big features now that we will want to in, to to implement uh, into the the legacy clock, but um, there might be some bug fixes that might need to be addressed before the transition. Uh, so you mean bug fixes in the old clock app? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are several bug fixes that need to be done in the old clock app, but I don't know if I would have the time for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the thing is. Yeah, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of big things, right? I'm, I'm not thinking about like old bug fixes. I mean, I'm just trying to think how to how to do this uh, this migration so that we've got like a solid clock um, in during the, the time that you're doing the the redesign. Oh yeah, yeah. Like for instance, the thing is, I want to I wanted to use the uh, old clock app sort of like a testing base. So what would happen is like there are some bugs re related to the alarms. So uh -huh. I would fix that yeah. in the old clock app first before transitioning that whole yeah. code base to the new clock app. Because I mean, to be honest, when you look at the uh, the designs of the alarm page on the old and the new, it's it's sort of similar. So what mm -hmm. goes uh, as fixed into the old clock app will definitely benefit the new one. So in those cases, I'll take priority and fix cool. them first. Cool. Yeah. And, I mean, the thing is, like uh, the new clock app, I've I've started to put an infrastructure around it. So we already I've created a sample QML project with uh, with the C++ backend, uh, and um, I've I mean, but the thing is, like I've lost a lot of other things that the old clock app has, like the translation framework, the Debian packaging, and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, uh, once I can bring the the new clock app to a really basic level where at least it shows the system time and then the location, for instance. I think that's the point at which we can start directing more and more energy into it. I think okay. until then, I'll be the one primarily putting my efforts into the new clock app. OK, cool. So let us know. Uh, I mean, I think it might be worth, like for translations, I can help with it. And we can find uh, someone else to help with um, with packaging. So if you could just uh, file a couple of bugs and uh, yeah, you can assign them either to me and Poppy, and either we can take care of it or take care yeah. of finding someone. Yeah, so, I'll do that. So we can, yeah, I'll say we can take care of the infrastructure bits. Okay, yeah, I'll also create a new uh, tag, for instance, so that we can use that to uh, mm -hmm. uh, track bugs regarding the new clock app. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so that was pretty much everything about the new clock app. Uh, as I said, I'll put these up on the wiki so you guys can take a look at them. So Nick, I have one question about that. Yeah. Um, how do you want to track some of the features that are in the new spec? Do you want to do bug reports? Do you want to do Trello blueprints? Uh, I've already started using the new Trello page for uh, for the new clock app. And uh, do you mean in terms of like feature requests and all this stuff? Like uh, like for instance, the new clock app has got the new world page that I think is not there in the new old one. So you want that to be reported as a bug report, or do you want me to add it to the Trello list and then people can just look at the Trello and see what needs to be implemented? 
I guess I was just wondering what your plans might be. I was, I don't know, I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of hard, it's, it's kind of hard to differentiate, like, between trial and bug report. In a sense, I would say, since it's a feature request, it's, uh, it's a new feature that needs to be implemented, I think Trello would be the ideal place to put it in. Mm-hmm. And then if there are proper bugs, then we put that in Launchpad, or everything else goes in Trello, I would suppose. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to com- to combine the things. I think we shouldn't just uh, abandon bugs yeah. for this because still it's, I mean, Launchpad is still the most public uh, place in which uh, we share features, we, we track progress. Um, our Trello board is also public, but um, like our engineers um, tend to look at, uh, at bugs rather or at Launchpad. So it might be worth like having, a, I mean, as you're saying, essentially, like having a feature description in, um, in Trello and perhaps it can be even broken in a, in, in a few bucks um, yeah. for, for a small features. That might be an approach. Yeah, uh, and what I will do, I'll take as a work item, if Andrew can uh, record this, I'll update the Clock Apps uh, Launchpad project description with all the links, like link to the wiki, link to the Trello. So basically all people need to know is the Launchpad page, and then from there they can go into whatever page that they want by reading the description. Cool. Uh, so yeah, was there any other questions regarding the clock app? No, any any blockers, um, anything that uh, did you to want just to poke people about? Uh, well, not yet. I mean, I've just started working on it. So uh, as I get, I have some design blockers, but I'm talking to Mikhail uh, actively about it as well. Okay. So uh, so that I'll get that resolved by myself and. I did also talk to Renato, who apparently created a world clock uh, you know, feature similar to the one that you see in the Ubuntu installer, where it shows you strips of time zones whenever you click on a city oh. in the map. Okay. Uh, and he shared the source code with me on Launchpad, so I can, I'll can i see how can I uh, bring that over to the new clock app, so I don't need to start from scratch pretty much. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And for the, for the alt, well... <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm just I'm just calling it all, but it's like <laughs> it's been two weeks. Yeah, I just old essentially. Uh, well, the thing is, if I have to bring it to the old one, then I need to add a C plus plugin, which means it requires. Oh no no change. no! Sorry, I mean, I mean backporting. I mean, is there any blockers for the for the uh, old clock up? Yeah, I'm I'm still waiting on Charles's branch to land regarding the alarms uh, wake up. So uh, the platform should wake up when the alarms is triggered. I'm still waiting on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm also waiting on the alarm sounds uh, features. Basically, he needs to implement the f- the support in the indicated date time, and mm-hmm. then the clock app can use that to set different sounds for the alarms uh, as dictated by the user. So I'm waiting on those two branches. I think that's the biggest blocker for the alarms. Uh, so are there branches? I haven't been following this lately. Are there actual branches uh, already for those? Yeah, I can. Uh, I'll try to find the links and paste them on uh, on the chat. One second. Okay. Cool. Excellent. All right. So, shall we go on with uh, with music, guys? Sure. Um, was there anything else that we need to discuss in terms of the everybody items? I guess I don't see anything besides clock. Um, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, there's, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about, and perhaps I'll just do this now very quickly. Um, I'm just going to paste a link on uh, IRC. Um, you know this one already. Uh, I'm going to paste it here as well. So, so yeah, as so you know, Poppy and I are going through these branches um, daily to make sure that, uh, that we're responsive, and if there are any blockers that we... Um, that we're responsive on those as well, and we, we uh, follow up with the platform guys. Um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, it, uh, merge proposals has, have been piling up because um, yeah, essentially we were in Malta one week, and uh, you guys started doing too much work. It's uh, unbelievable. Um, so yeah, so so yeah. I mean, if you guys could have a look at uh, any of your branches, or if you see any trivial branches from other apps that that you would be interested on. Um, I know that you've got enough to do, so uh, I'm not asking you to just go and do it. But I mean, uh, just just to be aware that there's this branch, uh, sorry, that there's this page, and that uh, 
if you guys are waiting on a review or anything, it might be worth just looking at uh, other reviews. Perhaps some of them are just trivial. Okay. Like, I mean, there, I think there are a couple of weather ones that are quite trivial, and uh, Martin is uh, is right now the only the only developer on weather. So oh, okay. if anyone could give him a hand, that that'd be good. Cool. Yeah. So, so in thanks. terms of music, um, Popey, some of one of some of our last remaining concerns at the moment is just stuff regarding Media Scanner Two. Um, from the action items from last week and other discussions we've had, um, Popey put some of the those packages into the trusty PPA. So testing out the new Media Scanner 2.0 stuff um, works easily from installing via the Core Apps PPA with the new branch. Um, we're going to file a bug that we currently have um, regarding the new Media Scanner 2.0. And that's, it's, there's a D-bus issue that we're currently um, finding. So we're going to try to push forward with landing our branch while filing a bug for the D-bus issue. Um, so I think that pretty much sums up that we had our meeting just about an hour ago. Yeah. OK. Cool. I've just pasted the bug in the um, IRC channel. It's one three two six seven five three. I think that's the one that uh, Andrew filed earlier. Um, yeah. the, con the concern I have is that we're delaying landing the music app uh, media scanner two branch, um, and the reason we're delaying it is because we're finding issues with media scanner two. They're not actually necessarily issues with the music app, but they're platform issues, and. That that can be Andrew's got some QML, a simple bit of QML that reproduces the issue in or one of the issues in Media Scanner Two. Um, I, I'm keen for us to push forward with the music app because this has been hanging around for a long time, and this is part of us getting rid of Grillo from the image and moving forward to Media Scanner Two. We're the only thing using Media Scanner One, um, so I'm keen for us to push forward. Obviously, I don't want us to land a broken app in the store, but equally, it's not the app that's broken, it's the platform. Yeah. Okay, so we'll need to follow up, follow this one up probably with uh, James Wright. And Thomas Voss. Okay. Okay. So we'll take we'll take an item um, to, 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 to follow up on this one. Uh, let me see if I can update uh, Pat. And then with those same, you know, the same push to get Media Scanner 2.0 landed, we are currently having issues with faking the home directory for the app. So that's another issue that's preventing us from landing at the moment. What was that one, Victor? Sorry. Currently, we're having issues on um, faking the home directory. Oh, OK. Yeah. So that's also prohibiting us from landing that branch. So it's two-pronged. <laughs> OK. But wouldn't you guys have an issue with the current uh, music app as well? Or is it, is it something specific to Media Scanner 2? I guess I haven't tested trunk. Um, is trunk using temp at the moment, or can't remember how it's doing it? I think it is. I think balloons did fix that. Yeah. I'll have to look at that though, because it's passing on the on the images image tests. Just fine. But we're unconfined, aren't we, at the moment? On so, trunk as well. The worry I have is that we're, we're placing a lot of importance on um, fixing autopilot tests which currently stomp all over a developer's music collection on the phone when they run autopilot and, and mock that environment in slash temp or somewhere other than home. And while that's important, I think we're delaying landing more important branches. I, I would rather 
that the autopilot tests stomped all over a developer's music and they copy it back over later, and we actually land stuff, than delay and delay and delay for these autopilot tests. And we've we've had this for a couple of weeks now. Is this something that we could? I, I totally agree on this one. But is this something that we can do already, or have the tests already been changed to use this uh, fake home, which is currently not working? It's currently not working. Yeah, and I think we need to look at what Trunk's doing, because I thought we were still faking home in Trunk, at least to a degree. might have been a different situation, but... Yeah, I think it was faking it, but I think it's doing it slightly differently. Yeah. But the same technique doesn't work with Media Scanner 2, I don't think. Oh, I see. Okay. So I think there's an issue that you fake uh, a home directory in temp and then point Media Scanner at that and point the music app at that, but Media Scanner carries on looking in your real home directory. And I think we're getting bogged down in trying to protect, you know, make, make the tests nice and isolated, which is a good thing, but I think we're getting bogged down in that and not, you know, actually fixing the app itself. We're spending way too long on tests and not enough on the actual app. Okay. So we could actually then make... It wouldn't be optimal yet, but it, we could actually make MIDI scanner work with, uh, well, with the way of testing in trunk, right? So actually, so Andrew, what broke Autopilot wasn't that the Dbus implementation of Media Scanner 2? No, what happens is when you run the tests, it just uses your real home directory rather than the fake one. Yeah, we had that working in Malta, though. We did have that working, but then when Media Scanner started using Dbus, it broke. Okay, so it might have been something dealing with Dbus. I wonder if we should just file another bug for Media Scanner 2, because if their implementation using Dbus is what causes us not to be able to fake home, if they can fix that before we can work around it, that might be good. Yeah. If it's trivial. But then it's just going to start looking at it, trying to figure it out what's going on. Okay. I'd like us to have a, a, a time by which we stop, you know, if, if balloons can't get it done by a certain point in time, then we should, we should revert back to the old way of testing and push forward. Yeah, I mean, even reverting is difficult because there's a lot of nasty stuff that we were doing when we were stomping on the user's music directory that would take effort to re-implement. Right. Because the tests have vastly changed. It's not just like reverting uh, an old commit. It's essentially rewriting the setup. But, yeah. I think we'll, we have to wait until Balloons looks at it and to see if it's possible to work around the Dbus issue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think in that case we'll have to to talk to him again. Okay. All right. Anything else um, that you guys want to do is because either from your apps or from the wider set of apps. Yeah, I was I was thinking of uh, uh, well requesting the core app devs to start using the emulator to because the thing is like uh, regarding the SDK PPA and the Qt 5.3 PPA uh, I haven't received updates to my trusty laptop for I think almost a week or two right now so and there are some important fixes in the trunk uh, so I was thinking of uh, starting to use the emulator and then encourage other app, core app devs to also use it so that the thing is that emulators would be uh, would be having the latest phone image right the devil images and they would be running the the latest SDK release or the latest S, uh, the Qt 5.3 for instance so probably that's something we could start encouraging people to do do you guys by the way use emulators for testing the music app or you guys do it on a real device uh, still on the real device for me because, I mean, like, to be honest, it won't be too much of a difference between running on a device and running on an emulator, because I think the rules are the same, like, an emulator is, uh, is detected as a real device by the computer, so 
They shouldn't, you well, shouldn't have to do any changes to it. One issue is the amount of space you get in the emulator. I don't think you get an awful lot of space for the family user, and if you're testing music, then you'll want to throw a bunch of music uh, at it. Uh, true. Yeah. And I don't think it shows up o over MTP either. It only shows up over ADB. Yeah, I, I, well, I use ADB, and Kid Creator also uses ADB to push the well, the clock app that I'm testing to install and stuff like that, so I haven't really tried it over MTP. Yeah, it's a minor thing, but, it, you know, real-world conditions are you plug a phone in and drag and drop chunks of music over. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's a good idea to, to push the, the, emul the emulator usage. Um, and also, because then, um, yeah, again, we're dog fooding um, our own tools. Um, I think it's more important, perhaps, for those developers who don't have a, a device. Because, um, I mean, if you guys are testing on real devices already, um, yeah, I mean, I think we've got a good environment as well. Or, or Nicholas, were you seeing, were you seeing any other um, big advantages of using the emulator versus a real device? Um, not, not really. I mean, it's just basically like if we start adopting it among the core app devs, and then we find issues and we report it to Ricardo, for instance, then that would mean that the third-party app devs would have a much easier time when they test it for their apps. Because I'm guessing not everybody has a Ubuntu Touch device at the moment. <coughs> and it wouldn't have too much of an effort uh, that we have to do in order to run it on the emulator. Well, I mean, yeah, for the music, I understand, but for instance, for the calendar, for shorts, it's it's a simple control F12, and you just choose the emulator as your device rather than the real device. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. Do you, um, hey, Nick, do you run tests on the emulator as well? No, I haven't started doing that. I should probably, but yeah. I mean, I've been using the emulator just to test how the text field gets hidden beneath the keyboard or stuff like that. But you know what it is? Is it possible to run the test suite on the emulator? Yeah, you should. I mean, the thing is, the, the standard commands that you use on a device, like, for instance, ADB shell or fablet test run, right? They basically they check the device's existence, and then they run the test on it. Uh, oh. And in the case of emulator, emulator will be detected as a real device to nice. those tools. I might start playing with it then. I guess I've just never had a reason to. Okay. Yeah, I should. I'll I'll see if I can uh, I can test the clock app test on the on the emulator. Uh, I think there might be a slight flaw in the pan for the music app in that I don't think media playback works on the emulator. Yeah. Ah. Sorry to keep throwing spanners in the works, but um, I, 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 I'm just booting one up at the moment because I, I haven't tested it for a while myself. But I, I, I think there is a problem with media playback. Okay. And also, like there is right now, uh, it seems that the emulator is uh, following Devil and not Devil proposed. And I you think we should that. talk to Ricardo about that. If there's a possibility to switch between them. Yeah, you can. You just use the same parameter, minus minus channel equals Ubuntu touch slash utopic dash proposed, proposed. and you'll get um, uh, I, I have both on mine, uh, yeah. devil and devil proposed. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what the SDK does, though. I haven't tested it with the SDK. The, the ones that I've been testing, I've, been, I've created them manually. Yeah, the SDK one defaults to the devil. OK. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Well, in fact, the interesting thing is the Ubuntu emulator, when you run it, Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually tell you that the command line parameter is dash dash channel. You have to know that. So oh. uh, I'll follow by you. Does it provide a help command? Oh, it does it not? Do yeah, help. Dash dash help? No. Ah. Or does it miss that command? Or No, you can do it. If you do, uh, well, I only guessed that dash dash channel worked. And oh, okay. But it, it's not listed in the, uh, in the help. All right. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, I know that's right. You have to run Ubuntu emulator create minus minus help. So if you specify the help after the the command. Hey. Yeah. So it tells you all of the options. Hey, that's better. Yeah, that's right. good. It gives you a channel server revision as well. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Sweet.
Yeah, I mean the thing is like I think for Victor it's not an issue because he can he you run the virtual VM right for Utopic to uh, do your development on Ubuntu Touch. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is I'm running Trusty and then I'm running a backward version of the SDK. So either I move to VM or I could stick with Trusty and then have the emulator as the device that I test on. So I don't need to have my laptop updated. I just need to have the emulator updated all the time. So that's, yeah. I mean, that's one advantage. You can stick with an older release of Ubuntu and then still have your app tested on the actual thing. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a killer advantage. Yeah. So yeah, I think it would make sense to, to start encouraging um, developers um, to use that. Um, it's a shame that we cannot do this with, uh, with music. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but for calendar it would be nice because we've had, unfortunately, we've had to ask Kunal I think a couple of times to update to the develop um, release uh, at the quite earlier stage because we couldn't backport the things for calendar. Yeah. So so yeah, that's where the emulator would come handy. By the way, do you know if the the documentation on delpo.upuni.com is updated uh, similar to your blog post? What do you mean? Uh, because. The Delpa.com has uh, a tutorial on how to use the emulator, and I'm not sure if that's been updated with the uh, the x86. Oh, uh, it probably hasn't. I'll have a look. Um, I didn't write that one, but uh, um, Kyle did, I think. Uh, okay. So actually, I'll take an action to update that. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's pretty much just copying from your blog and then putting into the other one. So. Okay. Um, so one thing that might be nice is. It would be kind of cool if someone could do a tutorial on the Ubuntu Online Summit this week or next week. Ooh, yeah. yeah that's a great idea. Yeah. It would encourage all app developers to use the emulator. David, could you want <laughs> to do that? I was trying. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I can sign up for that. Awesome. We get one more to our app dev session. Okay. So that was music. That was clock. Um, oh yeah, clock. I pasted the the blocker that I was I was having on IRC and also on the chat here. And yeah. I think, are we over time? By the way, did we set it to half an hour or one hour? No, I set it an hour, but I. Made sure. I. I mean, I put it on the uh, mailing list that if the meeting doesn't have anything else to discuss, we just end. Oh, yeah. Let's not prolong it. Uh, let me have a quick look at your um, blockers. Yeah, there's only one uh, merge proposal at the moment by Charles. The other one, I don't think he has started on it. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find the bug regarding that. So this one is for. It's regarding the platform. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty much regarding the uh, use of the platform API. So I believe Thomas has already implemented support for uh, the uh, the wake up, and it's just that the indicated date time has to use that. I think that's something along those lines. Okay, cool. And then the one that's missing then is for the alarm sounds. That uh, doesn't yet have a branch, right? Yeah, it doesn't have a branch. It's just a bug report on the uh, on that package. Okay. Good. So yeah, I'll make, I'll make sure we follow up with uh, with the platform guys on that one. No, on the yeah. Uh, and by the way, I wanted to ask um, when I start pushing the new clock app to the branch utopic hyphen three point zero, I can I can do merge proposals against it and everything, right? Just like a normal branch. Um. Uh, good point. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you can do merge proposals. Uh, we'll have to check with Francis. Um, he'll have uh, to set up Jenkins. Oh, yeah, to do a test. Those. Uh, but, I mean, if you've got trivial changes, obviously, um, I mean, you're just starting the, the app, uh, you can push to that branch. And then when you've got, like, something that's, um, that's like, more production-ready or 
DBEL ready, then we can start uh, like doing the mesh proposals. Um, okay. Yeah, I can do that. I mean, I'll uh, I mean, actually. I've... You can do mesh proposals at any at any time. It's just that right now, I think without extra uh, Jenkins configuration, I'm not sure if the jobs will run on 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 a separate branch. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, I mean, initially it would be nice if he can uh, make make it such that Jenkins just auto merges. It doesn't do the autopilot test yet because well, I haven't written any autopilot tests for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, if um, yeah, we can do that. But if um, if it takes a while, the other, the other thing that you can do is also merge manually. Yeah. So you merge the branch and then and then you you push. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying so that you're not blocked on on Jenkins. But uh, yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. Cool. Um, Do you guys have anything else to uh, talk about? I think I didn't have uh, anything else. All right, then. Oh, yeah, I have one last thing. Uh, so for the old clock app, right, I have two much proposals pr uh, proposed by another community member. So do I accept them or not? Uh, can you give me some more context? Yeah, in the sense like uh, they are design related merge proposals for the old project. Oh, are they like really intrusive or are they, are they things that you think? Uh, no, they're just small ones. Like for instance, for the clock, they're adding markers around the outer circle to ensure that it's, easable, it's easy to read the time. And I believe the other one was to uh, add the, the absolute time of the stopwatch laps, for instance. Okay, I mean, I would say if there are minor things, we can just uh, accept them if if you think they they make sense. I mean, as as with anything else, it might be worth um, uh, just doing a quick screenshot of each one of them and showing yeah. them as to the show, showing them to the designers or having a chat with uh, us or with anyone else that that you think might have feedback, and then. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll try doing that. Yeah, I mean, if they were, I mean, the the only reason I, I would I would um, be, uh, I would have concerns about uh, accepting it would be if it will if it would be like a big design change because then it might not be the worth the effort if we're doing a redesign. Yeah. But I think if there are minor things, um, I mean, I think we've said it in the past. I mean, any contributions are always a bonus, and uh, we should sure. uh, we should make sure that 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 um, that we accept them. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get it across the designers, but to be honest, they are quite busy. So, and if I don't, then mm -hmm. I'll just make the decision myself. Yeah, or I mean, if you can just, I mean, we can just have a chat between us, like us being like other core developers, uh, yeah. Paul, or I. Um, if you've got like a couple of screenshots, uh, it might be easier to um, to discuss, uh, and then we can even make a decision quickly on that today. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I have I have the much proposal ready actually. Cool. Uh, give me five seconds. I'll grab it. We can just do a quick decision on it. Because I think that's one of the two much proposals which have been there for almost twenty days now. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, pasting the link in, on the chat here. So this is how the stopwatch look. Uh, yeah, looks at the moment, and this is the one after the improvement. So basically, the, this merge proposal involves adding the absolute time. Previously, it only showed how long the laps have taken. So, say if the first lap has has been running for 20 seconds, for instance, but now we show the absolute time and the t uh, duration of the lap. So both of them. Ah, okay. So it's, it's not an intrusive change. It's quite minor, actually. And to be honest, I think it's it's a good change because I've seen other uh, stopwatches also follow a similar behavior. Cool. Yeah. I mean, my only concern would be to have too much information uh, in there. But if you think it makes it makes sense to have it, I'd say let's go for it. OK. And, yeah. and the other one, I'm trying to see if there's a, oh, yeah, that's in the screenshot. And the other one is uh, just the clock markers that I've added in the screenshot. So it looks so now the uh, the clock pretty much looks like the stopwatch or the timer. It has uniform clock markers around it. So the clock markers are every five minute mark. Um, 
yeah, to be honest, I don't, <laughs> I don't have an opinion, too much of an opinion. I mean, I myself pref would prefer it without the markers, but as I said, it's just personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, the so, thing is, the new clock app designs don't one. have it either, so I was thinking of uh, giving that as a reason to, uh, to not include it. I mean, I'm sure if the designers did think it was relevant, they would have added in the new one, so... So yeah, that's yeah. What what do you guys think, with markers or without markers? I would agree that it looks better without, but it's more uniform to include them. Consistent. So yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yes to be able to actually done now by voting on a hangout. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, th I mean the thing is, it's it's up to us whether we want to in to include it or or not. I mean, uh, I'll um, discuss this with the with the uh, contributor, and then I'll uh, we'll see what, what happens. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right. If that was it, did you guys have anything else? If not, we can uh, end the meeting now. Okay. Awesome. All right, so that was it, and uh, so to everyone watching the video, we'll have a summary of this meeting sent out by Andrew again on the mailing list, uh, and then we'll have uh, another meeting again next week, uh, yeah. same day. Oh. And, yeah. uh, we should uh, we should probably schedule it as part of uh, the Ubuntu Online Summit, actually. Oh yeah, um, true. Which is also next week, um, but I'm sure we can uh, have the same day. Tenth and twelfth, right? Sorry. The, the summit is between the 10th to the 12th. Yeah, so it's going to be on on the on Thursday still on. So we can actually have okay. the same the same time slot. Yeah, I think yeah that'll be nice. I think you'll also want to follow up to see whether or not that has a age restriction for Michael Spencer. Yeah, I think we yeah, found that yeah. out already. Um, yeah, the thing is like if uh, like the sessions on the Ubuntu Online Summit, right? We are the ones who are going to host the the hangar, for instance. And when I created this hangout, I was given an option to allow people below 18 to join or not. Perfect. Right, and we can always allow people, and then uh, everybody can join. Cool. All right then. Right. So yeah, see that was it. On next week. Nice work. Yeah, see you guys next week. Thank you. Um, Thank you for being part of the. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.